to the year-end 2022 rock show. I'm Rocker Mike. This is Rob Rossi. We got a few guests today coming on. We're going to recap a few things over the, the last uh, the last Hello. year. Okay, looks like we got another guest. Hold on. Roxanne, hey. Hello there. All right, we just Hi. went live, so you came in. Hey, Roxanne, how you doing? I'm okay. How good. you doing? Good. We're doing good. That's you guys weird. know each other? This, this lighting is weird, but I'm not as dark as you guys, so I guess it's not Believe weird. me, you don't want to look at us. Trust me, you don't want to look at us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right, I, knew, I knew a guy you once. Know, uh, you guys know Roxanne? Jack Can you hear me? I, I don't know. Or I, okay. I, I can only uh, hear you, yep. You can right. hear me. You don't, you don't mind if I grind while we're on, do you? No. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> All right, so like I said, this is the year-end 2022 rock show. We're going to be recapping a few things from the past year. Um, and we have uh, three wonderful guests here. We got Roxanne Fontana. We've got Jack Lipton and Spike Penetrator from the Penetrators on the right side. We're going to probably have a couple more guests today, too, just so you know. Um, also, at the end of every year, we've been doing it now. It's the fourth year. We talk about the uh, solo artist of the year and the uh, group of the year. And that's going to be these wonderful guests right here. Roxanne, I made you solo artist of the year for your wonderful album called Phantasmagorgy. Thank you. Okay. And you guys, the penetrators, we're going to talk about the wonderful year you've had with the single Time Is Mine. Okay. Thank so, you, Mike. Thank you, Rob. Oh yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's talk to the penetrators first. Okay, we'll get this done quick. I want to tell a great story. All right. Now, you guys were on our show a few months back, earlier in the year, and you had said that you um, had some great music recorded, but you just couldn't find anybody to put it out. So I've made a couple of calls. I had a couple of connections with Big Stir Records, who I thought might be able to help you and uh i put you in uh touch with dennis tuning who is the manager to tony valentino from the standouts and we knew we knew dennis and tony from a prior interview as well this year and dennis you know i i sent him your uh your, your songs and i expected him to put me in touch with big stir instead he said that he liked it he wanted to put it out. He was going to start this label. So it all worked out. You guys put out two singles, I believe, right? Two, yeah. Two, right? Uh, the second one was Time Is Mine, which was uh, written originally by Sonny Vincent. Great tune. Okay, you guys covered it. It's fantastic. And it spent about, if I'm right, tell me if I'm wrong, but if I'm right, about seven weeks on the top of the independent charts. That's about right. Uh, we were uh, four weeks in a row. We were number one. So uh, we were happy about that. But we were on total several weeks. Yes. Yeah, I think seven weeks is we were in the top ten. And top ten. Okay. Number one. Still, yeah. that's 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 fantastic. I mean, 
And we're All back right, in got, the top got 50. Some play on, uh, you got some air play on Little Stevens Underground Garage as well. Bill Kelly was oh, playing. Oh, yeah. You. Yep, we've been on that. And uh, Bill Kelly's show and a uh, few other shows. All, all these Radio Alliance uh Show, uh, shows all over the world actually we're we're doing very well in australia right now which is kind of interesting yeah, and the uk cool. so there's been a bit of a boomerang effect if you will so that's no, that's, that's fantastic that's fantastic where, where, can I, where can i hear it is it on youtube or something like that or are uh, you guys gonna, can... gonna play it yes uh, well uh for starters if you go to youtube and you enter the penetrators Time is mine. Okay. Should be that's right up there. Okay. That might be the easiest way. Good. I'll check it out. We appreciate that. Thanks. Great. Great. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So what do you guys got planned for 2023? Well, um, well, I missed all this technical stuff of the past few minutes. I did message you um, the cover of what will be our next record, Mike. Okay. And uh, it looks after a lot of uh, discussion that our next release is a tune called Treat You Right, which uh, this time was written by uh, some friends of ours, Mark Doyle and George Egosarian. And we, again, are doing our best to cover the tune and do it justice. And uh, if you check Hello, your messages later, uh, there's a nice cover concept that Dennis cool. Tuning put together and I just a quick word on Dennis. Dennis did a great job with us and uh he's really a great manager and a great force out there and uh uh really knows how to pull the strings and make things happen. So great job for Dennis in twenty twenty two for sure. Excellent, excellent. Yes, a lot of credit to him for that. Um I thought while I had my moment here on your show, I might throw a long Hail Mary pass down the field, see what happens, but I don't get to oh be on these podcasts <laughs> and stuff too often. <laughs> Go ahead. But, uh, I, I, to this, it's been months and months, and I keep hearing from all sorts of people how much they love our version of Time is Mine. Yeah. And while I got a little bit of an audience here, uh, with your permission, I'd just like to make a quick request of, of your listeners. Sure. And uh, that request would be, seriously, if, if anybody out there knows anyone who is involved with making commercials or making any kind of motion pictures or something, just speaking for myself, I think this song has a lot of potential. If you know anybody like that, if you could please contact Rock and Mike, and uh, you know he could pass on the information to us. But uh, sure, sure. Anybody and listening? Maybe Wednesday will dance to it someday. <laughs> you know, you uh, I said maybe Wednesday will dance to it someday. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, after what Mike did the last time I talked to him, Mike, I believe in you. You can make anything happen. So I just. Thought I'd throw that out there. Well, I threw a Hail Mary myself and it worked. Yes, you did. They work yeah. sometimes. So it's all good. It's all good. All right, guys. Um, can, I ask, can I ask what style of music it is? Because I'm not familiar at all. Well, What's that? Uh, what style Ella, of music you want to handle that one? Is? Uh, yeah, we're, we're definitely garage rock. Uh, we've been on, you know, underground garage uh, shows. And um, yeah, we, we've been punk rock, new wave, you you name it, uh, just uh, very 60s influenced, but, you know, we've added a lot of contemporary touches as well. Uh, the technology uh, is, is no longer sounding like it's done in my basement. It sounds like it's actually done in a, a pretty good <laughs> studio these days. How do you does. record? Do you record on tape or digital? Uh, we're, we're digital pretty much. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we were analog uh, purists at one point, but the, the sounds you can get these days with uh, digital is just incredible. And um, our, our studio that we use and also our co-producer 
are very familiar with uh, all the latest technologies and we've been able to use them to full advantage so it's it's and really plus there are there are you don't have much of a choice do you in america i mean how many analog studios are there in new york city right now anyway there isn't really any there are there. very hard electric to lady which is whatever price through the roof yeah well very yeah it's funny because uh we did a, a an album in uh utica new york uh at, at a studio of one of our friends and it was uh you know he, he had an actual 16 track deck and and tape machine from nashville that had some history to it and uh you know that that was where we did our uh, second album bad woman and uh you know but we ended up having to go digital with that we transferred everything from yeah, the tapes I, yeah. to the machines and uh you know ended up because yeah i mean the, but it's not the same the because the thing is digital, you, whether you like you it or to, not <laughs> well yeah but the thing is you know if you get the tracks down on analog and then yeah. put it to digital it's a whole other thing and that's really the best of both worlds for sure it just doesn't I, I just don't think the digital recording sounds good i mean i just it, does, it sounds good but then when you listen to it next to an analog recording you can it's so obvious you know i mean the difference it's, it's sure. thin. It's just thinner. I don't know. But I know that it's not easy. I, you know, when I was in New York, I, I was lucky because tape was still around insofar as ADATs. So ADATs right. were still, you know, like I recorded my two albums in New York on ADAT. So it was still tape. So it was warm and it sounds good. But then when I moved to England, the, there's a lot of analog studios here. So I'm lucky because they're priced down. I mean, you can go to a place like Abbey Road where you can do analog also, but it's so expensive. It's insane. It's well, you're paying for the name. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's uh, it's probably, it's not the same anyway as the sound the Beatles got because they were using four track machines. Yeah. So when, when they were feeding the mic, even though the room was big and tremendous, the, the I mean, how much could it have really picked up? You know, it had to just pick up what, what was immediately going on. So it's a, right. such a unique sound that you really can never duplicate unless you brought in old four track plays into Abbey Road. So it's sort of like, I don't know, I won't go there because, you know, I'm not going to get what they had. I, I think the golden it. age of uh, analog was actually uh, in the early 70s, like 1970. Absolutely. Eight, and that's the 16 track recordings, because that's that's what I recorded my record on is 16 track analog to yeah. two inch tape. And yeah, we we um, used some people who weren't around had to mail in the files, you know, mail in the uh, waves. But still, yeah. and then we mixed it onto the tape too, and onto like I think quarter inch tape. We mixed it, and then it went digital. But it's um it's a shame because I think that the analog, the six. You're right. The records of the '70s are the best sounding records. Definitely, really I agree. Like, with that. Listen yeah. to like you know T Rex or the Cars or any of the stuff that was made in that era. Because then when it went 24 track. It got a little stuffy. It just doesn't sound as immediate and gorgeous and sexy as the 16 track analog sound of the 70s, you know, from 71, 72, all the way up to 79. And then it then it started getting a bit more complicated. But um, and I don't I don't like 80s sounding records at all. I don't really like anything about the 80s, but <laughs> it's been the time of my life. There's not much to like. Music. Yeah, we but, spent um, the '80s pretty much ignoring it. That's the penetration. Yeah, that's the thing. So no. I, yeah, well, if we I could just bring up something, I mean, in the '80s, you came out with your uh, ba Kings of Basement Rock, right? What yeah. year did that come out? Uh, that came out in '89, I believe it was, or or '88, December '88, and uh, that was actually our greatest hits album. Uh, yeah. all, everything on that was recorded back, you know, between 76 or so to uh, 82. So, yeah, that, you know, even though it came out toward the end of that decade, it was actually, you know, it was on vinyl and it came out, you know, it was recorded uh, back in the 70s mostly. Yeah. So, so, yeah, we definitely had the analog tape sound on that one. <laughs> so, all right, so let's move on. I'm going to check uh, it out. I'm not, I'm not going to be prejudiced against digital. I am going to check it out. Yeah. No, we have uh, a lot of analog in our catalog also. So, you know. Oh, good. Cool. Okay, cool. Roxanne, yeah. seriously, um, Google the Penetrator's Kings of Basement Rock 
it's a really strong analog based album and sounds like okay. you might yeah. like it. Okay, cool. Okay. All right, so let's talk about this album. Okay. Oh, oh right. man, okay. Okay. All this right. This is Roxanne's Phantasmagorgy, came out this year, and it's the solo artist album of the year. I want to thank All you, right. Roxanne. All right. right. That's this cool. beautiful thank record. You. Okay. Um, yeah, good I have to I have to give a little credit to uh, Greg Prevost, okay? Greg turned me on to this record. He said he'd been listening to it a lot. He thought it was a beautiful record. I should check it out. And usually with Greg, when he says check something out, it's it's, it's worth it because he yes. hates everything. So, <laughs> so it really yes. is a fantastic record. He was just on the show, too. Yeah, we just had him on recently. Oh. We're going to talk about him a little bit after, too. Yeah. Uh, this was recorded on Sprezzatura Records, right, Roxanne? Yeah, that's my own label. And okay. I've had my own label since 1999 when I released my first record, which was produced by Dino Donnelly, who just passed away. God rest his soul. Yeah, song. I and, thought um, you when I heard that. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's sad. And uh, yeah. anyway, I started then. I mean, he didn't want me to put it out, actually. He wanted us to keep perfecting it till Atlantic right. Records said, okay, we love it. And I just, I was too impatient. And so um, I was impatient, not too impatient. I believe that if you make a record, it's got to come out, you know, there's no, that's what's I'm not going to listen to some nonsense of, you know, it should be more this. What I think they said that you can't have this kind of music. And he did electronic dance, believe it or not, um, with this kind of a singer, like they sort of knew that I was a heavy chick, I guess. <laughs> I don't know how they knew it, I guess by the lyrics. But it was all to the, you know, like electronic sounds. And we both disagreed with that. But he said, well, let's just keep going. And, you know, and I said, no, I'm starting my own label. I was on 45th Street in what is now the Hyatt. I lived above Johnny's Italian restaurant at 135 West 45th Street, which they've since turned, torn, torn down. And I started yeah. my own label from that address. Good address, right? 45th yeah. Times Square. And Perfect. so I started, started my, my label there and I put out that record and then I put out another record and then I, I stopped for a while because I had a kid and all of this and got married and moved to LA and was, was writing with my husband. But then when I moved to England and I started getting into it again, I started putting out the singles. And then this year, you know, I had like issues with the distributor, you know, I was, I was with CD baby and found out things that just weren't adding up. So I said, well, I have to just change everything and re-release everything, you know? So I just re-released everything and started a new label up legitimately here in England and called it Sprezzatura. And uh, so now um, it's, it's exciting too, you know? It's, yeah. to, to do, it's a lot of work and I cannot, absolutely cannot do what I need to do to promote this record because it's just too much work to do that. But I do what I can, and I'm not really into the idea of being, um, you know, a big star or anything like that anyway. So it's good. It's cool, you know? Let me so, ask you uh, something, Roxanne. This record ahead. is such a unique-sounding album, okay? It's really, I mean, it's kind of a throwback. It is a throwback to the 60s, but what would you, you call so? the sound on this album? What would you call it? I think the sound is very, I'm trying to light this friggin' thing. I think the sound is very um, 20s, 2020s. <laughs> because it's like we were discussing before about the mixing of digital and, um, and, analog. and analog. And so this is what I did. And like the digit and the analog I did was 16 track, two inch tape. And then people were mailing in certain parts. Most of it was done on the tape in London but people like in Australia were mailing in bits on the wave files. And then we would took those wave files and put them on the tape, which added some kind of warmth and then mixed it in with, and then we had to like adjust the sound to try to make it compatible with the tracks we did. And so sure. we put all that together. And so I think it does sound like, you know, some people said, um, this record sounds so great. You know, like how does it sound like great? It's like a lot of it's that combination of yes. like, the analog and the digital and you know I've, I've been a fan since i'm you know five years old of of rock and roll really you know people who know me from when i was a kid remember i was obsessed so it was always a thing so in all these years you sort of learn how to 
write songs. You sort of learn, you know, if you've got any talent, then it comes in, you know? And so, and I learned how to make records. And, you know, Dino helped because he taught me about sounds. And I worked with Gordon Raphael from The Strokes, producer, and he taught me sounds. And then um, just learning. And then I worked with Jack Douglas, you know, and uh, we did one single with Jack Douglas. And, you know, learned from him too, because I wanted to sort of girl group sound with him. Like, so I want a girl group sound. And um, he gave me probably the best sounding record of my catalog, but it's got a little bit of an A's thing to it on the drums, which I'm a little like not yeah. pleased with. So then I, when I went and did the song after that, he does the look, which is the same sort of girl group kind of early 60s vibe kind of thing. I knew how I wanted it to sound, not so much like that and more like authentic, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, that, so then I just started doing all, and then, so by the time I got to doing this record, I feel like I really know what the hell I'm doing in the studio, you know? And sure. start telling everybody what to do, you know, what kind of sound I wanted, what, what you know, what kind of style I want for this solo, what we want to do with this. I would have actually liked for it to be a little bit more uh, out there but it didn't come out that way. But it's hard to take songs that are so melodic, like the songs that I write and the songs I choose to cover and um, get really avant-garde with them, you know, and, and really different because they're so melodic. So, yeah. which is what makes it a psychedelic record because that's what psychedelic well, yeah. was. It was little melodic, good pop tunes with yes. all the shit thrown on it, you know? I mean, you, so, cover, you cover Donovan, you cover uh, The Church, um, you know, you, you have your own take on, on, uh, I guess it was like Sartre, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Eat, the, Eat the Morning Glory. That, Morning that's Glory. Yeah. Okay. What I liked also, Roxanne, I really, I mean, you put a lot of work into it. I really admire it is that you did a video for like every song. Yeah. Well, this is the thing that's going into 2023 is I'm making a film and the film is Phantasmagorgy, the film. And so oh. what it's going, yeah, what it's going to be is all these videos I've been doing and we're putting them all together and we're going to start with like maybe a little interview, a little something strange. And then it's all going to, because the album, as you know, the songs all run into each other. Yeah. So this is the, going to be the video of, of everything. And, and it's it's got a concept in a way, you know. So, cool. A, cool. Yeah, so I'm working on this this movie now and I'm what I, what I want to do with it is submitted to all the film festivals. There's so many film festivals. Yeah. And so that's a sort of exciting thing to go into. And you, I mean, you can do music videos and submit it to these people too, but I'm doing right. a 30 minute film, which is what, and I've got one song left to do, The Peak, which I just finished and I'm gonna put it on YouTube early next month. And then we're just gonna put the whole thing together with some other bits and uh, and submit it. You know, and if, even if only a couple say, we're gonna put it in, that's to me, that's a success, you know? So. If I can get someone to recognize it, because I've gotten good at making videos. I love my videos. They don't look like videos that are, you know, contemporary videos. They don't look like car commercials or anything like that. That's no, like, no. These are real conceptual like, videos. Because like, yeah, because I make poetic music, and I think that if you make that kind of music and you put a sort of modern video to it, it totally loses the magic. I mean, yeah, it's it's not a bank commercial. It's 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 got to look. Like, remember the old video, like, remember R.E.M.'s Radio Free Europe? That's the kind of thing I like to do that's sort of um, art school shit, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of thing. And, uh, yeah, so I'm excited about doing this thing and putting them all together. And the all next right. video, The Peak, that I did, it's got footage from, backstage footage from um, the 90s, which is the last band I had before I started making records. So it's got Rich Teeter, my old drummer from The Dictators, which I dedicated the album to. Because yeah. when we would, when I was in that band, we had this sort of sound that Phantasmagorgy is. It wasn't really girl group. It wasn't like pop blues, which is sort of what I've also done. And it wasn't um, folky. It was, um, we called it botany rock. I mean, we were like, everybody was doing grunge. And it was like, no, we're going to go the other way and do sort of, you know, psychedelia, you know, kind of thing. Long guitar solos, all that stuff. And, uh, but in the framework of um, melodic pop song, basically, you know, with psychedelic okay. lyrics. So, All right. yeah, so uh, yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna ask you guys to hang on one minute because I'm gonna talk about one more thing we need to mention as far as like an award. And that's Greg Prevost's book. I have a copy of it here. 
Okay. We started a new thing this year, book of the year, and that is this book right here. Okay. Uh, it's Greg Prevost's On the Street, I Met a Dog. <laughs> and All right. All the, right. the definitive history of the Chesterfield Kings. Wow. If wow. I could reach it, if I could reach into the internet and tell all you people, buy this book. Okay. I'm gonna, yeah, book. I'm gonna check it out, definitely. This 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 book is I mean, it's an autobiography, first of all. All right. So you're dealing with Greg as a kid starting out when he's young and you see how he grew up in Rochester, gets into music. Uh, the whole industry, I'm sure you guys can relate on the, the craziness of the industry. And what I really love about this book, and uh, Greg would, Greg went into it a lot when we had him on recently. It's the most recent show that we've put on, if you want to check it out. Uh, he goes into so much detail in this book. I mean, down to like, you know, who opened for who, what time, where. I mean, every yeah. he, he kept journals, this guy. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Okay. Yeah, I and did that too. I have journals. Of, yeah. The, the last I'm like book hundred number pages. 93. The last hundred pages is nothing but like snapshots and pictures Ooh. and, <laughs> you know, dates and locations. It's. You know, yeah, I'm not you don't even have familiar. to like the Chesterfield Kings to like this book. This I'm not at all familiar with the Chesterfield Kings. They were around in the 80s, right? 79 to, to about 2009 they played. Yeah, I just it went by me because I was, you know, doing my own thing. I did a memoir too, you know. Uh, yes, from, you did. It was a similar sort of thing, you know, non-famous memoir, which to me is a great idea. I mean, I thought that the publishers would jump on it, but, you know, the publishers, they're, they're afraid, you know, they just want to sell the same old, I became rich, I became a drug addict, I almost died, now I'm cured, bullshit, you know? So, yeah. but meanwhile, good literature of, of good story, good literature of good stories gets lost. And I think people would really like to read something different. So I'm glad Greg did this book. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And uh, when we had him on last week, he he, he mentioned that he, he wouldn't be able to come on today, unfortunately, but we pre-recorded a little short interview about the book yeah, that will be tacked on to this oh, show cool. once we once we put it up, but probably over the weekend. Okay. Yeah. All I right. So, guys, out. I want to thank you all for being on. I appreciate it, and you guys did such great hard work this year. You're my homies. It means a lot to me to be, you know, to have people in New York say, "Hey, you put out the best record," you know, and all this other solo artists. It really it means something to me because coming from you guys, you know, I could pay a publicist who could actually get paid to sit down and listen to it and go, hmm, maybe this is a great album. But, you know, it's it's cool to just have word of mouth. It's really organic to just have word of mouth and have people that are from my home, because, you know, I'm from New York. And uh, to, to, for them to say that, it means more to me than than you would know. Uh, we love having you on, Roxanne, and keep in touch. Same yeah, with so you guys, same with the Penetrators. Uh, Go on YouTube, check out the video for Time Is Mine, and uh, look out for uh, stuff they have coming out in 2023. We'll probably have you and back We'll on. probably have you back on again, I'm sure, next year. Well, Thanks. Album. All right. All right, guys. Take Thank care, you so right? much for having us on and the award and everything. We look forward to talking to you again. Yep. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Roxanne. Happy New Year. What are you guys going to do? What are you doing, Mike, on New Year's Eve? Uh, I'll get lumped up, be with my wife, you know, maybe get lucky. Who knows? <laughs> you, um, you gonna, what are you going to listen to? Your album. Good. But you should be listening to some good dancers. Listen to some uh, Wilson Pickett and I can Oh, yeah. So always yes. got soul music going. Always got soul music. <laughs> yeah, I've, been listening, I've been listening to a lot where you love Wilson, Wilson Pickett. Pickett. <laughs> Elliot and I love Wilson Pickett to death. I love him too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Barefoot. I, I listened to the yeah. original Barefoot yesterday. I mean, that's a classic, definitely. I mean, very, yeah, but it's very clean. And, you know, Wilson Pickett's version is your, you are up, you know? It's raunchier. Raunchier. Yeah. A lot raunchier. Yeah. yeah it's, I, but I like the original. It was like, I could really appreciate the perfection of it. Definitely, nice. definitely. You know, but Wilson nice. Pickett's version was amazing. And, you know, listening to Ike and Tina, listening to Holly Golly, that's like amazing. Amazing you know? stuff. It's, that's that's really uplifting music, all that kind of... Um... It's good New Year's Eve music, that's for sure. Yes, yeah. but it's good to be body. You know, you got to get the body going. Yeah, right? yeah. 
All right, so stay tuned for the complete version of this video. We'll send you guys when it's ready, probably tomorrow or the next day. Yeah, the link. Okay, great, with the great. Link, great. You, link great. And you can share it around. And thank you again for coming on, the three of you. Really appreciate it. Happy New yeah. Year to everybody. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Take care. Have a good one. Okay, ciao. Ciao. Yeah, I had a lot of kick from the Yeah. That's it. And we'll still talk, right? Yeah. yeah. I just oh, one thing. we're still live, right? Yeah. Make sure that you're not disturbed on. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And we're still on. And we're still on, everybody. So here we are in the bowels of New York City. Yeah. The back of the International Bar in the East Village. Yeah. And I'm drinking a Bloody Mary that the wonderful Claire made me because she's incredible. Right? Yeah. You, you make a good Bloody Mary, too. Yeah, yeah. Sunday. Sunday. Yes, I make do. a lot of Bloody Mary, a lot of hot toddies, man. People come in here for the hot toddy. Mm -hmm. And um, so far, um, it's been an interesting year. We had a lot of guests. We did. Uh, you know, and we have, me and Rob have four shows, okay? Mm -hmm. We have The Rock Show. We have Conspiracy 420. We have The Rocker Mike and Rob Presents, the interview show. And, of course, we have the Son of Sam Chronicles, which is our biggest show where we talk yeah. about the Son of Sam. Um, yeah. And yesterday we had the Freak Show end yes. of the year review. Right. You got the Freak Show with John. So we did a bunch of stuff this year. We had a lot of shows this year. I think we put up. Yeah. More than was, ever, right? More than ever. We had like probably, like it was ridiculous. We had like something like 3,000 minutes of eight time. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> I know people are probably sick of seeing our faces. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? The last couple, of the last two weeks, which is something we never done, we, we haven't put up that much stuff. That's why I put that great photo stuff up. I put this up as quick as possible. Yeah. I don't go hide with home and edit it. I better do it before I get lumped up too. Oh yeah. Because <laughs> you're useless when that happens. Oh yeah. yeah. But, but we're alive right now, actually. In the internationals. If you guys are around and want to have a quick drink or give somebody a shout out, let us know. And we'll come down. Shut them out. Come down. Yeah. We'll yeah. Be here 102 for First Avenue. We'll be here for a while. We also got an interesting uh, guest coming up. We got um Scott the Clown. Scott and... the Clown. We're waiting for this guy. Uh, he just got back from Tennessee to see his family, and yeah, he's a real clown. A, he's real, a clown. real clown. Dude, you know what the funny thing? We're going to talk about two movies, but Beyond the Body of the Doll, Jesus Christ, what a movie. Well, uh, well, we'll, <laughs> we'll, 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 we might as well bring it up. We're, we're, we're talking about the Elvis movie that came out this year. So, oh, soon, soon, as, soon as Scott the Clown gets here. And <laughs> we're also talking about Beyond the Valley of the Dogs. Oh, my God, what and, a movie. <laughs> yeah. Now, 19, 1970, directed by Russ Meyer. That's really all. Russ Meyer, that's yeah. all you need to know. All right? You know what you're going to get. You're going to get tits. You're going to get ass. You're going to get he sex. Wanted to put more, gonna get, no, he wanted to put more nudity. Yeah, it would have been an X-rated movie. No, but it was. It did get it an X-rated. X. Yeah, it did. It did. But it was still was very popular. It was played in a lot of mainstream theaters. It yeah. made money. Critically, it was killed, but it made money. Yeah, it was like one of the biggest films. Also, the same thing with the Valley of the Dog was a big film. And the Valley of the Dog, Jesus, that girl just did drugs after drugs. And they You're talking about the Valley of the Dog. The, yes. the original the one. one. The second one was more like a screw. That's the one Sharon Tate's in that. Yeah. The Valley of the Dogs. It was, yeah. It's like, oh my God, that movie was ridiculous, man. Like, and then see that like, commit suicide at the end of the pills like that. Yeah, what yeah, happened yeah. to the girl days when people ate the pills? That would never happen. Because <laughs> she got she got like breast cancer and killed herself, right? She, Something. She, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. crazy. Yeah, I was yeah. watching that movie, but that movie the same thing. She went to France, became a nude um, a nude model. Oh my god. Yeah, the Valley of the Dolls. That yeah, was right. I think that was based on a book. Yeah, but that Originally. was one of the biggest film runs in, in the 60s. 60, 60 67, of, I think that came out. It was the most popular film they yeah. did that year in that studio, whatever the studio was, which was yeah. like, a Paramount or whatever it was. Yeah, I'm not sure. MGM maybe. I'm not, yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure. But it was damn good, and everybody was good. Everybody was really good in it, but it was such a dark movie, man. It, it, well, when they made Beyond the Valley of Dolls, they, they intended to make it almost like a sequel yeah. to this, but it ended up being more like a spoof, a spoof of it, yeah. okay? Which, 
you know, sometimes you go, you make a move with one idea and something else comes Who out of it. that movie? Oh, Roger Ebert. Roger that? Ebert and Roger Ebert, the great, the great uh, film critic, and, and Russ Meyer together came up with the story. <laughs> they paid somebody to write the script, but it was, it was, their, it was their story. Which is insane. Yeah, and, and to his dying day, Roger Ebert was proud of that film. Oh yeah, he, he caught a lot of shit. I I seen interviews where people were like, "Come on, that movie," you know. He's like, "No, it's a great movie." He, he, <laughs> he's like, "He's like, we did everything we wanted to do. It's a great spoof." And interestingly enough, when it came out, it, Gene Siskel, who would be later on Ebert's partner in film critics, yeah, you know, film critic TV shows, Siskel and Ebert, right? Yeah. Gene Siskel killed it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's a, it's a and I remember watching Cisco and Ebert one time because I used to watch them on Channel 13 all the time. Yeah. Okay, years ago. And one time they brought up the movie and they argued back and forth about the merits of it. Yeah. Okay. And Cisco said it still sucked. <laughs> <laughs> and he got to keep up the principle, yeah. man. Well, yeah, yeah, he, well, he was a stubborn material, man. You couldn't change his mind. I was um so for my my uh, this year the movie like I told in the free show I told my movie of the year was uh, Top Gun Maverick it was a fantastic that was an movie. excellent movie yeah you know what I went in there not thinking much of it and then when I saw it, I was like holy shit and then the the tribute they gave to Vac Kimbo in that movie because his character the Iceman. the Iceman like he became like an admiral <laughs> it was amazing yeah, yeah and um and they had it was good I thought it was an excellent you know I went and I inspect I was pretty shocked by the movie. I, I was remember great. I remember you saying you didn't expect much and you walked out that it was fucking great. Yeah, did yeah. you saw it? Have you seen it? Yeah, yeah. It was, I, saw, I saw it streaming. I didn't see it in the movies. But you, you never think that you can make like the first movie was good. I think the second one is so much better. <laughs> it's a different movie. It's 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 a different kind of movie. It, yeah. it doesn't have the same well, of course the problem with Top Gun, the first one, is it's so '80s, and you just can't get out of like the music and everything. Yeah. It's like if they if they had done it a little differently, it would be more timeless. Yeah. But it's still a good movie. Yeah. Okay. But it really is kind of like a you know a little stuck in, stuck time. in time, stuck in '85, whatever yeah. it was '86, whenever it came out. This one is more of a movie, movie for the ages. Yeah. You know, and it pays homage to the first one okay. and, and everything, which which really they the whole movie really is, and then. And then, but it's like, not stuck in a certain time. Yeah, you know? but I love that they had like the old, those, yeah. those old eighties, so dangerous and all yeah. that stuff. I was like, oh, man, this is great. Because you don't get yeah. too many movies like that. Sometimes you get a sequel like that so many years later, and it's just not good. But this one was a very, it was like a tribute movie, but it was I wonder, well done. Uh, did, did, did Tom Cruise want to make that, or was he kind of pushed into it? I think he wanted to do that for a long time, but oh. they didn't have like the right technology, and he wanted to get the right flight scene to get the right pilots to do those scene. Yeah. So I think that's what it was. It was all about getting the budget, getting the money, because he wanted to make like, if dude, have you seen some of the flights in that thing? Like yeah. those flights scene, man. Nothing we ever seen in no, I know it's incredible. It's incredible effects and incredible footage, and you know. Yeah, I'm surprised more people that people didn't die doing that film because those some of those stunts and flights that they did. Oh, they what, that what these planes can do now, anyway? Yeah. You know, it's amazing. But you see that crazy bastard? He's still doing his own stunts. He did that crazy stunt Cruise. jumping off a freaking building. Did yeah. he have to do that? No, he can get, he, he did it. It's he likes like, doing his own stunts. He's like, you know, who else does that? Jackie Chan also did that. Oh yeah. Years. Oh he yeah. Like, Jackie Chan, uh, you know, back in his in his prime in the late eighties, early nineties, right? Well, I, I say early nineties. He was doing his own stunts. He was already like in his forties. He was that a point. little bit older, right? maybe even a little older. The guy would like break a foot, break an ankle, like every every every, uh, every movie. Every movie. Yeah. Every movie you get hurt, but he would like wrap his foot up and keep going. And keep going, which is amazing. And the yeah. guy was old too at the same time doing that. Do you remember the first Jackie Chan movie to cross over and make it big? Do you remember the name? Uh, what is it? Rumble in the Bronx. Rumble in the Bronx. I, I love and, that and, movie. And, and, and it's so cheesy because in the background you see mountains. <laughs> <laughs> No, this was not filmed really in the Bronx. No, it was not. Okay, there are no mountains in the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember that thinking, damn, this, this and, is the Bronx. And I remember, I remember getting like a bootleg copy of that on Forty Second Street. What was it nineteen ninety? Maybe yeah. yeah. I don't remember. And, and and having a VHS copy of it from the karate store, the kung fu store on Forty Second Street, had it, and I'm watching it, and I'm like. 
you know, he supposedly worked like in a bodega, right? Yeah. And then like, you know, he looks out the window and there's like a freaking giant Himalaya mountain in the freaking back. <laughs> like, wait a minute, did I miss something here? This is the Bronx. There's no big mountains in the Bronx. Yeah, but that movie was actually pretty damn good. Right? It was. I, no, he, I all of his, I mean, I'm a big fan of the, uh, the drunken master ones, the early oh, stuff. Was yeah, crazy. I mean, that's right. all the early shit. Yeah. You know what's the other thing that's interesting about that? Like, he did those movies. It's the same thing that Bruce Lee, the big boss. Yeah. Then it turned out to be here, the Chinese Connection or whatever the hell they Chinese turned Connection. In. Yeah, they changed the they name. They don't change the name, but these movies were all out. It was so funny when you watch them in America, they dubbed them. In English, the, 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 the track is so bad, but yeah. nothing's sinking in. That's oh yeah, of course. That's, I mean, that's what kung fu movies were known for. <laughs> that's you know, great. That's I, I, great. I would do the impression if I could, but I suck at impressions. But you know, like Eddie Murphy always had a good impression yeah. of that when the mouth mouth moved different from the words. My, I always um, they, they did that. You know, with the uh, with the um, the guy from the Wu Tang, the Wizard did the the remake of the Man with the Iron Hands, and he did a sequel. He, he, they kind of did that thing. No. Uh, the man with the iron hand. What he? It yeah. wasn't iron. It was like uh, iron fists. Maybe. Iron fists. Or who was that? Did you ever see? Now I'm thinking of something else. Did you ever see um, the flying guillotine? Oh yeah, that right. Was the, the, guy, the, the guy with the you would shoot those the the boomerang freaking yeah. thing and then cut your head off and yeah. it come right back. That was sick. I remember that. You yeah. know what it was? I used to go to Times Square and watch those movies. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. For hours. Oh, and you'd be in there all day because. Oh, yeah. You know, you didn't have to leave. You just keep staying in it. It didn't throw you out. And you, you know. didn't need any drugs. So by the time you got no, out, there, it was, was a con people, it was a contact high. Those people smoking. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. Pieces, you know, Everybody was smoking weed, getting high. They would put it out right there. There's <laughs> some kind of sexual activity going on. Okay. I remember being in there going like, "Oh my god." Didn't Pee Wee Cook get caught in one of those seasons? No, he got that. Wasn't, did he get caught in Florida or somewhere? I don't, think it, was New, I don't think it was New York, but it was, was caught in a porno theater. In a porno theater. Smacking his monkey. <laughs> Pee Wee, not so Pee Wee anymore. <laughs> I found that old, when I, when, I, when I moved out of my apartment last year, early this year, I found an old newspaper of that. I kept it. Of, the, of, of Pee Wee on the front page, oh, okay, my God. and actually at the same time, and I forgot this. At the same time, what else was going on that was perverted was the the Woody Allen Soon Yi story was going. Oh, on. that was at the same same, same time, time oh, as that. Yep, yep, yep. That thing with Woody, uh, but you know what? What that was like a adopted daughter. So, well, he didn't do anything illegal, yeah. <laughs> but but he it, it definitely was a. Uh, not ethical, I guess you I could say. Yeah, you know, so. I mean, you're not supposed to hook up with your wife's adopted kid. It's not supposed. To, well, your girlfriend's adopted kid. <laughs> they made Alice Cooper out of it. Oh, they made Paul Stanley yeah, out of Paul it. Stanley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking at the devil one over here. Yeah, it's hard. Maybe it's hard for you guys to see here in this back room, but there's every there's all kinds of Santa Clauses on the wall. Some are upside down. I don't know if you can see it. There's, it's, none, there's none behind me. It's, it's creepy looking. It is creepy. It's, one of them's got like the eyes blacked out. <laughs> it's a lot of demented people that hang out in this bar. <laughs> and you serve that. You no. said you serve that. Jesus. I do serve them. Uh, I'm going to have to get another check one. Check your phone next. real quick and see if um, call anybody, anybody, anybody calls. Let's see. Uh, no. No. Nope. Oh. Okay, Call Denaro was supposed to come on, but he just bailed on us. Okay, it's okay. He's with his grandkids in Legoland, so. Legoland, that must be a lot Leg of fun. Yeah, yeah, definitely Legoland. And uh, that's okay. We had a feeling that might happen. But I want to thank Call. Um, he's been a, a fantastic uh co-host and everything on yeah. the son of sam chronicles that's our biggest show we couldn't have done it without carl uh and, uh, and we've got to be good friends and and uh so i want to thank him for this great year we've had on the show yeah. um also i want to thank um neo, neo yeah. right Grace. neo and chris from the son of sam chronicles definitely and i want to thank all our guests that come on the rock and mike and rock presents or the rock show or whatever um, and also, I want to give a shout out to uh, 
Ugly Things magazine. I, I can't promote this magazine enough. I bring it up a lot on the show. I yeah. know. Um, this is the latest uh, yeah, okay. latest issue that came out, number 61. Uh, check this magazine out. It's, it's fantastic. It's just like so detailed, so... Uh, so chock packed with uh, information. information about a lot of garage, 60s garage bands, regular rock and roll, everything from 60s garage to you know 70s punk to some new stuff today. Um, it's got great contributions from all kinds of people. Uh, Cyril Jordan from the Flaming Groovies has a column every every issue. Greg Prevost from the Chesterfield Kings. Uh, he. He has his own uh, contribution he writes, does interviews sometimes. Mike Stacks, who puts this out, does such an amazing job. Uh, just check out Ugly Things Magazine, uglythings.com, I believe I it is. Should, I think you should see if you can reach out to them. Maybe you can come on the show. He, he was... had, you know, I have. And, and they, they actually started their own podcast oh, over okay. the summer. So they kind of were like doing their own thing. Um, and Mike has a band called The Loons. I think they're out of California, I think. But you know what the thing is? It's never yeah. hard to do cross-promotion, no. collaboration, because that actually helps everybody. It does. The end, you know? It does. It does. Because we had that guy from Hey Bartender. He was a good collaborator. Was that this year? Yeah, that was Yes, that was the Anthony from Hey Bartender. Yeah. Definitely hey Bartender. shout out to him. Uh, he has a great show, Hey Bartender podcast. Um, he's out of Texas. Yeah, and he just talks about he interviews bartenders, yeah. and he talks about the the stories and things that happen during bartending and and shit we got to deal with, and uh, you know I just uh, I'm gonna be starting a bartending job too, uh, starting in January, so I'll be dealing with that kind of shit too, you know. Um, so we're still waiting for Scott the Clown here. Um, just want to ask you, Rob, what did you think of the Elvis movie? We'll get into this more when he comes. Uh, what did you think? You know, what, you know what the one thing? I never realized that the colonel was a Dutchman, right? He was well, like no Dutch. one knew what he was until they started looking at him. He was like a Dutchman. And yeah. He was um, very manipulative. And, yeah. And that was something that I never really knew. You always heard about the colonel, but then when you started, that guy was, that guy was a connie. He was a connie. He was a, he, he, he was a con artist. And yeah. yeah, con like a connie. He, was, he, took, he just looked at him and he just kept on the snow, the snow by Elvis. A snowman, snowman. Snowman. Snowball, snowball. Meaning, snowball, meaning snowball, like a snow job. Money. Yeah, Man, snow, snow. Do a snow job. It you was know. crazy how, and then the, when he, the, my whole thing was the most interesting was when the father told him to take a step in, he had everything he spent yeah. written down again, this is how much we owe. It's like, it's like, oh my God. Well, because he created like this, almost like a shell company related to everything that he did. So yeah. it was like he, when, when Elvis wanted to get rid of him, and we'll go into this again after, but when Elvis wanted to get in, you know, rid of him, he couldn't because yeah. because he would have had to pay him back for everything that uh, everything he did. It, it was terrible, man. You know. But what what I really loved about this movie, and it was probably my favorite movie from the year, I think. Yeah. Uh, I watched it about four times. Um, it it really captured, especially in the second half. It's not a perfect film. Okay. There's a few things I didn't like about it, but but. You and know, then they showed him that he was the original Jay Z selling drugs to all the other musicians. They didn't really get into that at all. Which I thought was what, what they they, 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 they kind of left that out. Uh, the, you you see that there's one scene where he's in the back of a car and he's driving and they're telling him I don't know who it's supposed to be some other you know performer uh, telling him oh take these these pills it'll make you stay up you know it could have been Johnny Cash it could have been Johnny Cash could have been could have been uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, who, Jerry Lee had, Lewis. who passed away this year, and uh, um, yeah, sadly, yeah, we, 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 we have a drummer from um, ZZ, from um, Rolling Stone passed yeah, away. Yeah, Charlie Watts. That was twenty twenty one. That was twenty twenty one. That whole COVID thing made everything see. How was the guy from ZZ Top? That, that was twenty twenty one too. Yeah, I yeah. would read. Uh, Loretta Lynn? Loretta Lynn was this year. This year. Yeah, that was a big loss. And Jerry D. Lewis was definitely this year. Yeah, yeah. And it was so ironic because we just uh, did a show on him. Wow. Right? Yeah. We, had just, we oh, just yeah. did a podcast. He died. Like, right? He died before we had a chance to put it up. 
I think we did it a few weeks ago, and then we, we moved we, up we the moved, date. We moved it up. It was supposed to be for this month, and we moved it up to, uh, you know, October, I think, or yeah. November, when, when he passed away. And what we got for next year? What, what kind of shows we have? You got a oh. little sneak preview of what we have? Well, ja for January, The Rock Show has a two-part episode about Willie DeVille and Mink DeVille. Uh, Willie was the singer. And we got some special guests. And we got a special guest on the second part. Stay tuned for that in January. Then February, we always do Black History Month. We talk about black artists. Um, we're going to do a show on Sonny Rollins. We're going to do a show on Sam Cooke. Okay. Uh, and also the conspiracy. The, the, the conspiracy shows. Uh, we got a, a story of the, the Lugaru. Lugaru is a creature that lives in the Caribbean, the black Caribbean countries. Uh, we're going to talk about, and we're going to have a special guest. You know who's going to be a special guest? I might as well tell it. Sandy? My wife, who's Haitian. She's got some great Lugaru stories. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we're also doing a story about some myths and mistakes that are often uh, attributed to African Americans uh, regarding their history, uh, particularly about slavery and other things that have happened. Uh, it's a very interesting article that I found in Vox magazine, uh, and I'm going to take a lot of information from that and make a conspiracy show out of it. Should be good. That'll be in February. Um, God, March. What do I got going in March? I know I added it on. I know you said. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a quick look here and cheat in my phone because I'm locked up and my memory is shot. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's see here. No. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. March. We got two rock shows planned. Uh, one on Nina Hagen, the great Nina, Nina Hagen, German Nina. performer. And then a show on X, the uh, Los Angeles-based punk band from the late 70s that became a little more uh, straight-ahead rock and roll, kind of like what Social Distortion did. They, yeah. You know, they got kind of a little more rockabilly, a little more country than Social D. But but I like X a lot, John Doe and Xene Sebeka. Uh, it's about time we do a show on that. A couple other things I've been thinking about. Uh, well, one is I'm thinking about doing a show on the Dave Clark Five. Dave Clark Five. That, that, that should be good. A lot of people don't realize that the Dave Clark Five were as big as the Beatles at one point. Yeah. Okay. But interestingly, they never could change. Where the Beatles evolved and a lot of bands followed with them through the 60s, Dave Clark Five really didn't do that. They, 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 they were the same, you know, uh, British... Uh, invasion sound. They did uh, experiment with some soul music and stuff, but they really were they were gone by you know 1970 pretty much. But at one point, 64, 65, they were as big as the Beatles. People forget that. So we're going to do a show on them later in the year. That's pretty interesting. I also think I also think we got to do another of the best five live albums. Yeah, I was thinking of that too. Um, but that's like one of the, those are the fan favorite shows. Yeah. People love that. That's, that's the kind of thing I love to get fan uh, participation in. So if you guys can think of some great live albums that we could review. Uh, yeah, we I know should we put did. A poll we, on, yeah, we. Um, on the Facebook page. Yeah, shows. yeah. Starting next month, I'll put that up and uh, we'll put that together for maybe the springtime. That should be cool. Yeah. I think the best live album would be you, and I think. And to this day, I still think it's one of the best live albums. I still think the um, which one, the Kiss album, to me, is one of the greatest. Not so the first live, live album, the first. Kiss Alive. Kiss Alive was yeah. fantastic. I still think to me that's one well, of that's, my favorite. That's the first record. Album. I, that's the first album I bought. Yeah, I mean, uh, we did talk about this last year. Yeah, uh, it really broke the band. Yeah. Okay, and uh, it really put them into the public consciousness way more than they were. Yeah, they did. And, and they never never looked back at that. Another thing we had a lot of review, we reviewed the Kiss um was this year that we did the Kiss Nation, the Kiss um documentary, which was pretty good. Forget if that was this year or twenty twenty one. If you want to look for it, I think Netflix got it up now. You can find it on yeah. not, not on Netflix, you can find it on Hulu. Hulu has it up. 
They got both episodes. You can watch them back to back. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, that was that was very good. The other thing that's on Hulu also, if you haven't watched, was the pistol was pretty much that we we did a yeah we did a good show on that. That Um, was very good. Yeah, we got quite a bit of hits on that one. Um, And and I liked it. Uh, It's on it's on Netflix. No Hulu. 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 Um, And. I think it was well done, and and there was mixed reviews with it. I know, yeah. I know John Lydon, who I have a lot of respect for, didn't like it, uh, didn't want anything to do with it. There was a lawsuit involved and all that. But I'll be honest with you. I mean, as far as you know, dramatic things related to the Sex Pistols that have been made over the years, which really there haven't been that many. Uh, it, it really is one of the best. I do like. Um, the documentary, The Filth and the Fury by Julian Temple, uh, and that's just a documentary, and that's, that interviews all the, the living members, and uh, everybody can sit, obviously. But you know what, for the film documentary of the year, we got to give it to um, Danny Garcia. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, we can't, forget, Dan- we can't forget Danny. First of all, and, uh, not, Uncle not, Mike. <laughs> not, D- DJ, DJ Uncle Mike, Mike Schnapp, okay? Uh, great guy, uh, great DJ out here in New York City. We've, we've seen him many times. Uh, him and you know him and, and Danny Garcia, who have made movies in the past, they got together to make this film, uh, nightclubbing the, the birth of punk in New York City, which was all about the Max's Kansas City scene. Yeah. Um, which I thought right away was very interesting because usually people want to talk about CBGBs, which definitely is important, but. Yeah kind of the Maxis scene gets pushed aside a little bit. And really, that's where punk got started, okay, in New York City. Bands like the New York Dolls played there, and Johnny Thunders, uh, Wayne County, you know, the proto-punk early 70s bands that would be the influence to bands like the Ramones and television and stuff like that, that, that played CBGBs in 74 and 75. These guys were playing Maxis in 72 and 73, and some of them crossed over the CDs once CDs opened up as well. Another perfect example is, is Mink DeVille. Yeah. Okay, Mink, Mink played both places, uh, and I'll show that we're, um, we're doing on, on Mink DeVille and Willie DeVille next month. We'll talk about all that. Uh, but nightclubbing was, was great, uh, did very well in the... Uh, you know, for the small release that it had, yeah, uh, it did very well. It got some accolades. Uh, it got it now. It's on DVD. You can see it on Amazon. Uh, it's, I believe they're working on a streaming thing of it. Yeah, I don't think it's out yet, but it should be soon. We'll let you know. Nightclubbing: The Story of uh, the Birth of Punk in New York City. It was very good. Yeah, uh, and we were, me and Mike, were lucky to see the sneak yes, D- the Danny, movie. Danny, and and Mike were, were wonderful, and they. Uh, they gave us passes for the VIP premiere of the film. Uh, some of the actors and actresses in the movie are, are were there, uh, yep. you know, and uh, we had a great time. We interviewed Danny afterwards, and we got to be friendly. And 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 Mike and Danny even came to my big retirement party yeah, this year. Yeah. yeah, I had Mike DJ and Danny came along, and we're hanging out in my backyard eating. Burgers and fries yeah. and everything, man. And, um, you know what's the other thing? When we saw that movie, they showed there was a great tape of... Um, Sid Vicious. Of Sid Vicious. Sid and the no final cur- Sid, Sid the final curtain. Yeah. If you guys want to see it, Danny was very nice enough to put it on YouTube. It's on there right now. Sid the final curtain. It's a 20-minute, 20 25-minute uh, short based on found footage that's never been seen before of Sid playing... Yeah. Sid Vicious playing Max's Kansas City Live. Now, old punkers like me, okay, we grew up on the, you know, the Sid Sings vinyl, which was pretty awful. Yeah. Okay, the quality was awful. He was whacked out of his mind, lumped up. Uh, but for this particular footage, it was pretty. It was pretty. pretty, pretty it, he was he was pretty together, and uh, it, it was great. I think he had. Uh, I forget who the band was. If it was the drummer from Pure Hell, or I, I, I forget off the top yeah. of my head. That's usually who we had. I think it was the same in, in this one. Maybe Ty Sticks. Yeah. I forget. But uh, check out Sid the Final Curtain. And you can uh, find that. I'll put the link on the, yeah. uh, the description. Yeah, it's on YouTube right now. And uh, also, um, the way that it was interesting, Danny, how we got the footage, I mean, I, 
I said to him, I said, how'd you get this? And he said, just, just some guy from Japan. Yeah. <laughs> been sitting on it for years. And I think he contacted him and said, hey, I have this footage. And, and Danny said, no, nah, it's impossible. Everything's been seen. Everything's been recorded. It's out there. We know there's nothing good. Yeah, okay. but he got it. He had it. It was, it was this one, you know, one show that was never recorded there. It was great. So it's really, you know, it's really worth it. Talk about a time capsule. Right? Yeah, oh it is a God. time capsule. Oh, my God. So, fans, let's take a little break before we, we will be start back. the live show again. We're going to end it right now, and we'll yeah. be back within, like, 30 minutes. What I want to mention, too, uh, I'm not sure where you're going to edit it in, is uh, we have a new award this year for Book of the Year. Yeah. Okay, and it's for Greg Prevost's book. Uh, I showed it before when we had our guests on, but it's... On the Street, I Met a Dog by Greg Prevost, The Definitive History of the Chesterfield Kings. Uh, we interviewed Greg last week. Uh, you can see that interview on YouTube soon, right? Oh, yeah. yeah no, you can a, catch it you right can catch on, on audio. On podcast, on, on audio. On audio. Yeah. So you can find that on look Spotify. Get, getting lumped up. Yeah. Look on the Getting Lumped Up on Spotify, Pandora. You can hear the you can hear the interview. Yeah, on Apple. It's doing, actually the interview is doing very good. The audio by itself is doing very good because okay. that was a very um, uh, uh, candy interview that we had. Very with him. candy. And he, he gave a lot of information. So the the, the, the audio is doing fantastic. When I put the um, when I put the video, it's pretty much going to be pictures of the book and stuff like that. Yeah, we'll have a little montage. A little montage, and it'll be like it was like about an hour and fifteen minutes. But, yeah, um, that'll be that good. So that'll, uh, that'll be on audio soon. And also I'm in this video in YouTube. this show, uh, when we do put this up after it's live, we're going to be editing in a quick 10, 15 minute interview we did with Greg about the, just the book as yeah. well. Okay, so because yep. we, we have this new category. We're going to take a short break, and we're going to come back, hopefully, with the clown. Yep. And I'm going to have another drink. So yep. when you see me, I'm going to be a little more lumped up. <laughs> we'll see you later, and Happy New Year. Okay, everybody. Welcome back to the year-end show, year-end of 2022. And we have a special new category today that we're talking about. It's Best Book of the Year. Okay? And, and there's a lot of books out there, but this book... I felt was the best book written as far as music and and really as far as uh, it's an autobiography as far as a life is concerned a most very interesting uh, life that this person led and I'm talking about Greg Prevost a uh, former singer original member of the Chesterfield Kings he has a full solo career now for the last ten years and he's written a book called On the Street I Met a Dog the definitive history of the Chesterfield Kings. And that it is. Uh, welcome back to the show, Greg. Oh, hey, Mike. What's happening? Yeah, yeah. So um, I got your book pretty much about maybe about a week or two after it came out. Uh, just so people know, um, you can get it. Can, can you get it on Amazon now? Yeah. Okay, it is on Amazon. I had gotten it through. Um, uh, I don't know about that, but I know for sure that Mosmo just re did a repressing. And I know... Ugly Things has it. Mike mm -hmm. Stack's Ugly Things web store and House of Guitars in Rochester definitely have it. And they do mail order too in the States. You know, over in Europe, I'm not sure there's a lot of different ones, but if you're over in the United States, those are the two places I know have it for sure. Okay. Well, all you got to do is really Google it. On the Street, I Met a Dog by Greg Prevost. Greg, um, you know, you've had a long career. Why a book now? Um, it, it's weird because Massimo of Misty Lane, you know, he wanted me to do a book. Like, actually, I, I put a bunch of pictures up. My friend Mary Ellen Gardner took years ago at Scorgies. And then when I put them up, he's like, oh, you have to do a book. This is back in, I don't remember what year, 2016 or something. And, uh, and I'm like, nah, I don't want to do a fucking book, you know. And, and then he kept, like, saying, hey, you should do a book. And then I took my old website down because I was going through this place called GoDaddy. And they got all slick and commercial. And yeah. And then my my web page turned into like they wanted it to look like a wine ad or something. And I said, "Fuck this!" You know, it's linear. You couldn't make it look like a magazine. You know, you can do layouts. And I couldn't do it anymore. So I said, "Well, this is pointless." So it had an outline on there of the history of what I did, and I just took that outline and then I started filling in the blanks. And I figured it was a good time to to do it. You know, I didn't really want to do it, but then and I didn't want to do a band book. And which it isn't. It's not a. It's not a Chesterfield Kings. No, book. it's it's really an autobiography. 
Right. I didn't want to do a, just a Chesterfield Kings thing because that you have to know the beginning and after because I don't know. It's just part of my life, you know, it fucked my life up. So <laughs> <laughs> it ruined my life, but you know, <laughs> well, uh, I, I mean, I can't, I can't answer for that, but you made a lot of fans happy. Let's put it. Well, you know, see, I, the, the good plus side about that, I, all of everybody I know, that's great friends and like like you for example i mean i i know because i don't know if somehow the band had something to do with me knowing a lot of people that i'm friends with you know right. so, so it was a good thing and i met a lot of people like you you know that i wouldn't have met yeah, <laughs> right definitely i mean you know out of uh out of so sometimes things happen in life that you know you think is bad and then good things actually come out of it you know mm -hmm. yeah so um how long did it take you to write the book, by the way? About, uh, about four and a half years. Like it, the, yeah. the, it was actually easy once I, I had to go through all these boxes of shit and stuff and letters. And I have like boxes, like thousands and thousands. I've had every letter that somebody wrote me from 1970, early 70s to like the 80s. Right. I had everything and boxes in my parents' house. So I went through every letter. That's how I had quotes from like billy miller and stuff you know and because it was like it was from the time so it kind of it's kind of gave it a different slant when you have like billy miller saying something at the time right you know what i mean but um yeah and i just went through every magazine and every videotape and all this shit and like i said my friend mary ellen gardner who took all these pictures she has all these scrapbooks of like hundreds and hundreds of pictures from all the early shows from upstate new york and when we play with the ramones and alfred and all that shit and she had the dates on each picture, so it was really easy to like start putting the timeline together that way. You know what I mean? And not yeah. make a mistake. And then, and I used a lot of details, and I have old journals and stuff when I was a younger guy, you know, a kid and shit. And I know I just kept track of stupid things like what records I bought each day and all that kind of nonsense that doesn't mean anything, but it worked good for this book. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I got to mention uh, your your lovely wife, Miss Carol, because she did a lot of the pictures in here, it seems, right? Oh, yeah. Carol did the, she did the cover, too. The cover, the cover. yeah. Yeah. All the album covers, the mm -hmm. recent ones. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's cool. But so yeah. everybody that's a fan of the Chesterfield Kings or what, you know, you've done over the last 10 years solo-wise needs to get this book. Everybody, I demand it. <laughs> and uh i just want to thank you for uh for writing this and putting out this this fantastic book it's very easy to read and you're gonna find uh greg is a, a an average guy he's a regular guy but he just you know ended up with this <laughs> crazy band and you know <laughs> and, and, and an exciting life and i i think it's it's an inspiring book that's all i'm gonna say about it. i really found it inspiring so that's why i wanted to make it uh, the book of the year, and this is a, a new category for us, and I guess we're going to continue with it, I'm sure. So thank you, Greg, for coming on. It was an honor, actually, Mike and Rob. Thank you. I, I appreciate you having me on the show. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm sorry we're, we're so low budget. I can't give you, like, an actual award, but, you know, you're going to get a mention. <laughs> <laughs> got a cement floor and a bunch of... <laughs> <laughs> No. Well, if you ever come to New York, you know, there's always a a, a drink and international waiting for you or, or a slice of pizza, anything you want. We'll take care of you. Come down. I look forward to seeing you again and uh, meeting Rob up there. It'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And if you're ever up here, you know. Well, I, I might be. I will let you know. And if you are with the definitely meet up and at the house of guitars, you got to go there, of course, yep, you know, yep. well, I went there last time uh, I was up there. It's an amazing place. It really is. Yep, yep. I think Bruce told me, he goes, Oh yeah, I remember. Cause I told me you, you were up there and he remembered you being at the store. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So this is the year end show. So I'm going to wish you a happy new year and well, uh, right. we'll definitely be in touch. Okay. Okay. All right. Mike, thanks again. All right. You yep. take care now. Right on. Have a good New Year's. You too. You too. Right. Have a good one. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hey everybody, welcome back to the year end rock show podcast, the year 2022 in review. This is part two. We were waiting for this guy all freaking day. <laughs> clown Kong, Scott the Clown, where you been? The late, the late Kong. The late, but better late than never. I was thinking about calling you Shakes the Clown, but I don't want to get you such a fuck up. But that's okay. Well, like, you know, it's not your fault. That's, that's another great movie that we should review. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 
So, like, every year, the end of the year, we have a special guest, Tom Collins, the guy that eats more children than anybody else in the world. Yeah. I love children. They are delicious. Delicious. And the blood. This is the fourth, <laughs> this is the fourth year in a row with, with, yeah. with, with Clown, and we always review a couple of movies, and this year is no different. We're going to be reviewing the 1970 movie Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. Both classic. Home classic, and also the brand new 2022 Elvis movie, which was my favorite movie of the year. Um, I love that movie. My favorite movie of the year still was Top Gun. Uh, Maverick, I right? Love Maverick. Right, it was great. Right. But we're going to talk about Elvis, but first we're going to talk about Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. Let's get into it. Now, I, I'm going to just give a little background here. Okay? I don't Pick like what happens to Z-Man. <laughs> Z-Man did not you fare Superman? well. Superman. <laughs> he did not fare well in this movie. But this movie was came out, like I said, 1970, directed by Russ Meyer. And right away, you know, when you see that, you know what you're going to be getting. Oh yeah, that's a TNA. Yeah. Okay. And, and co and co-written by Roger Ebert. Co-written, story co-written by Russ Meyer and Roger Ebert, which is fascinating. Which. Roger Ebert, to his dying day, swore that this is a, an amazing film. Right. Okay. And what's so funny is, before they were together, you remember Siskel and Ebert? Yeah. Okay. Right. Gene, Gene Siskel penned this film. Okay. <laughs> he said it was a piece of shit. He hated it. Okay. When it came out, garbage. And I can remember watching Siskel and Ebert on Channel 13, right. and then bringing this up on more than one occasion. <laughs> right. All right. Right. Yeah. They he stuck the neck on Ebert thought it was a great flick, and, and, and Siskel hated it. Hated but, it. Now, it was originally written almost as a, uh, a sequel to The Valley of the Dogs, which was a 1967 film uh, starring Sharon Tate. Yeah, several right. other people. Correct. OK. But really, what it became was more of a spook. It, it, right? I mean, it, 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 really, it, really, it really isn't a sequel at, at all. It no. to do at, it. at the beginning of the movie, they decided that they need to make make it very clear. Yeah. There's like, it opens up with like, this is not a sequel. Right, they, right, right, right. They have a, an introduction there written off. Let's talk about gun in the mouth right away. <laughs> yeah, the gun in the mouth, yeah. Now, okay, so now... The cast is interesting. It's a bunch of really no names. Uh, Dolly Reed is Kelly McNamara. Cynthia Myers is Casey Anderson. Uh, Marsha McBroom is Petronella Danforth. They call her Pet, right? Uh, and you know who's in this movie? Uh, are, you, are we going to talk about uh, Silence of the Lambs? We could. Oh, wait, yes. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Well, well, who has a very Back, small sir. part in this movie that you might not have caught is Pam Greer. Sam Greer has a small part in this film at a, at a party scene in the background, and you just see her. And, I mean, you gotta understand something. Russ Myers made a lot of movies. Okay, Fast the Pussycat, Kill Kill, Pussycat, I mean, okay. you know, plenty of uh, about and you know, a Benita Valley, the Ultra Vixens, and all that stuff. To be in a Russ Meyer movie, you had to be like 44 D. And yeah, right. Okay, basically. He, he was, he, so he, Pam, Pam Griff is that. He's famous for his love of boobs. Love of, of boobs. <laughs> I, I definitely But also, you know what else is in this movie? Uh, the guy who played Baxter, uh, he was in Alan si Silence of the Lambs. He was, the, he, was the, he was one of the cops. In one of my okay. favorite scenes in Sons of Life. Okay. And uh, it, like when, when, uh, oh, when he was in the in the uh, in the jail in, in Memphis, and uh, he, he's the guy that like he was the cop that like when they when uh, it, it, it turned out that, that he was. He, he, he fucking killed the fucking cops. Yeah. And I think I remember. Yeah, you can yeah. remember. Yeah, yeah. He played the guy named Baxter in this movie. In this movie. Wow. Now, also, you have Alan Napier as like the Nazi guy. Oh, yeah. Okay. And this movie it, has it, everything. It, 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 you know, it, it has, has a. It has, has, has a. It has a. It's got, it's got, Nazi it's got, it's got a chick rock band. Basically, what it's about it is, is a chick, rock it's got roll. everything. And this, movie has, and, and, this movie has everything. And, 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 
Lesbians. Lesbians. I can't even make this sex sex. Like hurt. This looks like they were hurt. I know. I know. It has, it has sex, drugs, also more sex, and more, more drugs. drugs. And it got an, it got an X rating when it came out, but that didn't stop people from going to but see you it. You know what it actually funny? did very well. That guy wanted to shoot some more nudes. He's got an X-ray. He thought I would have shot more nudes. He, but, but they were but gonna that. He would never got distributed. They that would have taken. They, the they were trying to make a mainstream movie, but they had one too many nude scenes. Yeah. So they they gave it an X. But a lot of people went to see it. It was yeah. crit, critically it was panned. Yeah. Okay. But that didn't stop people. They went to see it. Now, one thing I love about this movie is the music. Uh, you yeah. know what? You know what? The music alone is worth the price of the mission. Did you know that the, I think the original soundtrack was never released until the 2000s? Wow. Is that true? Yes. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, Strawberry Alarm Clock. Right, <laughs> they, uh, right, they, the band Strawberry Alarm Clock, Incense and Peppermint, everybody knows that song. They're actually in the movie, but what it's about is Stu this- Stu Phillips. Stu Phillips wrote all the music for this song. Okay. It's great. And you know, in, in case you don't know who Stu Phillips is, do you know the theme from Battlestar Galactica? Is that what do, you, you do you know the theme from McCloud? Oh, is that true? Yes. Do you know the theme from Knight Rider? Oh, man. Okay. Stu Phillips wrote that. Okay. Now, now, genius. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Now it's about it's it's about uh, a girl band, an old girl band, three piece band, that starts out in a small town. They move to L. A. and to make it big, and all all the all hell breaks loose. Oh, okay. is that what it's about? Because I have no time. <laughs> I'm that's already that's understanding that's what this movie is actually about. That's basically what it's <laughs> about. But they don't get invited to that guy's house, and I don't know what they just played some. Oh, we want to sign you. It was the most yeah. ridiculous no, work thing. Like that. Okay. Uh, now, Z, Z Man is supposed to be like a like a Phil Spector crazy <laughs> fucking producer type. Oh yeah. Okay. And and you know, or an Andy Warhol crazy nutcase type. Okay. <laughs> And you know his parties, or everybody known for his parties. So they go there, and their whole life changes. They have a manager that like can't handle it. Like, that the fact that the, you know the one the one girl singer that was his girlfriend, yeah, is like getting big and everything. And yeah, they, they're on stage at a, um, a TV show, and he goes up to the top of the skylights and <laughs> dives off to kill himself. Like <laughs> splat. On the fucking, on the okay. fucking floor. Uh, I was shot. Then. Yeah. He's going to live. There's some things I would like to say. There's some things I would like to say. This was Roger Ingram's, like, like, you know he's just yeah. writing. Yeah. And he's and going through all his yeah. Shakespeare stuff. Um, yeah. Right. And that's, Shakespearean and that's training. What he, that's, what he gives, that's what he gives this character. Like, all these. Now, I also have to point out something. Roger Ebert. And like, you know the movie um, Blue Velvet. Like, yeah, he panned it. He panned yeah, really? it. He hated it. And he was like, but he, but he wrote, and he but talked he wrote about, I know. And he's talking about how horrible it was that uh, you know Isabella Rossellini. It's a know, great movie. Uh, you know, uh, it, it, like, like one of the things he said, like, I just watched the movie where, where. Even Bergman's daughter gets raped. Yeah. <laughs> and he, yeah, hate, he hated he hated Blue Velvet. But he wrote this movie. But you have like, you know, he wrote like a transsexual <laughs> pro yeah. producer. Yeah. Movie, uh, you know, yeah. Right. producer but, that, that oh, actually might have, Lynch, been a, but might, might have been a chick, Lynch. actually. You know, yeah. I, saw, uh, yeah. I, I, I highly recommend that you look up online uh, Roger Ebert's hand of blue belt. Uh, yeah, and you'll be yeah, like, yeah. Hey, nah, that's like, not cool. That's not cool. <laughs> but he but, wrote this shit. But he wrote this. <laughs> he wrote this. <laughs> now, I gotta give I gotta give a shout out to not like they're around I mean, anymore. But I gotta give I gotta mention Kim's video. Because if it wasn't for Kim's video I wouldn't have known about this film. Way back in the day, talking like Kim's late eighties. Okay. So it was the it was the only way to see these kinds of movies. You know back the, then. the soundtrack of the original uh Batty of the Dog did pretty good too. Oh the, the original Battle of the Dog. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that movie did, did very well. This movie did good too. Now I'm gonna throw something out here. All right. All right, you tell me what you think. Do you think this film 
with the, the, the girl rock band the way it was right. was an influence to make Josie and the Pussycats. Huh. I didn't think of it until you said it. It could have easily been. Uh, I never I thought, thought about that. that. Yeah. I really believe, because Josie and the Pussycats started in 71. Okay. This movie started, in, this movie came out in 70. Okay. And you got, you got, you know, the one black chick in the band. You got, it's a three piece, right? All girls. Yeah. Okay. And the music is kind of, the same in a way, yeah, I okay. Never, I you never know, thought about that. I think Hanna Barbera <laughs> saw this film and said, and "We're gonna it. make, we're gonna make a movie, we're gonna make a cartoon with these chicks." Huh. I, I'm just throwing huh. it out there. I, I looked for any kind of information on that. I couldn't find nothing. It's just me, huh. but I really think that that's true. Huh. You know what's the interesting thing about it? They had the black, like a black heavyweight champion. Yeah, it beats, he, beats him up. Yeah, it was like a Ali. I think it was a Spooker Ali. The guy looked at him. Like the like no, I mean, the, the like probably the smartest character in the whole movie was this black couple, you know, and I think that that was a great way. You know, there's a, there's uh, another movie like that. that. Now after yeah. she opened the door and dropped all those bottles of booze, I was ready to take the bitch out. Yeah, that's dropping true. all that booze, he's coming in and then boom. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> there, there, there's another that movie that came out around, around the same time that has a similar vibe, Wild in the Streets. Oh, oh, in the wild street. in the streets, yeah. oh, and, and I, be, I believe Richard Pryor is in that. Okay, as a as a drummer, right? right? Oh, like the fourteen in fight, the they grow to bring, you know, lowering the voting age to fourteen. I think I think he's the drummer in that. But Beyond the Valley of Dolls is it, first of all, it came out. It was X-rated yeah. because of a lot of the sex and violence. It had a lot of sex. Yeah, a lot of, movies, a lot of sex. yeah, a lot of a lot of you know, lesbian very, sex very, is in very, it. Very, what you look it up? But we're also talking the, about the Kelly Affair. Once they turn into the Carry Nations. The Carry Nations. <laughs> but, <laughs> but again, I want to bring up the fact that uh, that um, uh, Roger Ebert, who just panned Blue Velvet for its whatever, but he wrote this line, and I, I wrote it down. Anyway. You will drink the black sperm of, of vengeance. vengeance. <laughs> the black sperm of, of vengeance. vengeance. This is the man who yeah. wrote that. It's in the script. He wrote the that. script. And he pays blue, blue velvet. <laughs> Somebody forgot where they came from. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I literally had to write it down because I'm like, yeah. you just. <laughs> we love this movie. I love this movie. I, I, I love this guy when. Um, this guy lost his head. It was like the two people lost their head. Yeah. Because he was trying, uh, what was it, Lance Rock? He was trying to fuck Lance Rock. Right, uh, Lance, Lance Rock <laughs> is a porn star. Yeah. Basically, okay. Yeah. And, well, he's kind of like. Lance you know, Rock. He's kind of like. Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's like the great that porn star. Yeah. Okay. It's up there with Dirk Diggler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, you know what? When you look at this movie, you, you, they definitely influenced that movie. Sure. They influenced a bunch of other movies sure. that came out, but this thing is like, this is like, a, all right, we're going to go no, here. I'm, I'm telling you, that it, it, it created Josie and the Pussycats. Because, because you have the, the three girls in the band. Yeah, the geeky, the geeky that. manager, the geeky manager guy. Don't fall got the, don't fall got the doobie. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody been walking the bed and slide the. Hey, wait, 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 wait. What about, what about, what about that guy? Right, right. You right. know what? He was such a dick. <laughs> <laughs> but he was like. He went 
Lady. Can't even get well, a lady. I think, oh, okay. I, think, I, think, I think Porter was the symbol of the establishment. Yes, he was. That, that they were, that they they were, were fighting, fighting against. against. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a he, he represented Richard Nixon. Well, what is it? Because she was, this one girl was going to get like a million dollars. She wanted like half a million now and they got some getting 50,000. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you're going to get 300,000. That's all you want to have, man. She couldn't even, okay, the guy couldn't even perform. The, 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 only reason, the only reason she wanted to have a million was because of Porter. Yeah. Because like he kept saying that. That'd be the deck to her. Remember, he gets in the bed and his sock has got garter belts on his fucking ah. socks and everything. <laughs> and re- remember at the end when he's like at the window? Yeah. And the, yeah, and the judge at the, goes over. Closes it. Like, he's got that goofy mustache. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, everybody, you got to go see Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. Rent it out. It's streaming on Amazon Prime. Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, 1970. And I can tell you, there's not, a, there's not really a happy ending. No, it's not a happy ending. Right, it's, so an, it's an hour let, and a half of let, chaos. Let, let's talk about the ending. Okay. One of the craziest endings of yeah. any movie I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody loses so, their head. So, uh, there's some decapitation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a, there's, but, there's a shooting. I, there's... I gotta say this. I, there, there, here's the thing that I noticed by rewatching it. They're all like at the very end. They're yeah. like, "Oh my God, uh, our friend is dead." Yeah. Let's sing uh, a song. And, and, they're, and, they're, all, and they're, they're like, "Our friend is dead." They're like, "Ah!" And then there's like, uh, there's another person. I don't know who it is because they know they the, they're, I know that. And they're like, "Ah!" And then, and then, and then, Lance. And then the yeah. kid, the kid, who is in a wheelchair because he jumped off the fucking, he jumped out of the, you know. Uh, he jumped right, he tried to kill himself, he's <laughs> fucking, he's fucking, and he's but, he's like, stopped, but he starts oh, thinking, he's starting oh, to get better. Is, like, they're all like, even, even one of the girls has been shot, yeah. and, she's, and they're all like, oh, and they're like, ah, and he's like, oh wait, he moved his toes, and they're all like, Oh my god! Oh my god! Then it gets even better. Now they're, they're all happy. Now suddenly they're happy. Even though they're, like, happy. they're like sitting there in this blood yeah. and gore. Right. And, 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 and they're like, oh! And they're like, yeah. oh, he moved his nose. Oh, okay. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it's, it's like oh, somebody like, said. Where is this going? It, it, it's the like somebody at the end, it was the black cup for Texas because they found they, out they, that's they, all they that there. <laughs> it's, like, it's like somebody said, no, we can't have a down ending like this. You've got to add something what? at the end to make it happen. Uh, <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought this up. I'm glad you brought this up because in the end, they're like, now they can like talk about each character. Yeah. Well, and there's like yeah. a narration about each character. Right, and, and how well and they I'm did. I'm not thinking, yeah. I'm just thinking, I don't know this for sure, but I'm just thinking like, Somebody went, hey, you know what? We need to, we need to fix this ending. Yeah, right. And it was like, let's talk about, yeah, let's talk already, about what everybody did, and where we are, and how they are Oh, don't yeah. forget about Otto the Funky. No, the Nazi. Guy. Guy. The Nazi guy was drawing. Yeah, no one cared about him. But the lesbians were there, right? Both of them. Both of them were there. Both of them were there. And then, and then Paul Lance Rock, that, 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 that vampire that wanted a rape, I knew you would do it. Yeah, 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 it's like, no, yeah. oh, I knew you would do it. It's so fucking funny, man. Yes. Uh, how about, how about like some of the party scenes? Oh, okay, like oh. with that guy with the with the, the, the hammer and the ball sticking out. Ah. The, the, the two old goofy characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They're like, Murda. Oh my goodness. I think it would make I think I think those are the two characters that later on became the two old guys in the Muppet. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. All right, let's move on. All right, Beyond the Valley Dolls was great. Everybody go watch it. Okay. Right. And we got right. we gotta talk about Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 I know you said you like Maverick. I, for me, it was this movie. I watched it like, you know, four times this year. It was excellent. It was now, great. it starred Austin Butler as Elvis. He was great. You had Tom Hanks as Colonel Parker. And uh, Olivia De, De Jong, I think her name is pronounced, as Priscilla. It was directed by Baz, 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 Baz Lerman. 
Now, Baz, Baz, Luhrmann. Baz Luhrmann directed Moulin Rouge and, and the 1996 wow. version of Romeo and Juliet. Oh, with Caprio. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. Claire Danes, yeah. Now, it came out June 24th of 2022, released by Warner Brothers. I have to say, they made this movie for $85 million and recouped $286. Wow. $286 million worldwide. It's the second highest grossing music biopic of all time. You know what the first is? Um, it's not that long ago. It was, um, is this, are you quizzing oh. me? Stop yeah, quizzing me. This is Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, Bohemian oh, Rhapsody. Right. The Queen movie is the number one music biopic of all time. Now, what I didn't know until I started doing the research, I was curious about this, is uh, Austin Butler actually sings... Oh, it's it's own. It's on his own for the yeah. early years, the more rockabilly stuff. Yeah. Okay, that's all right, Mama, and all that. But when it came when it came to the later years, like the the Vegas years, what they did is they kind of blended his voice and Elvis yeah. Elvis's voice together to make it. Now, what I really liked when I did the research is that Priscilla and Lisa Marie gave a blessing to this. Is this movie. true? Yes, they they, they actually liked it. They liked the film, uh, which I was happy to hear. I mean, you know, they, they could have said it soft, you know, but it was, they I, liked I'm gonna, it. I would just like to say this real quick. Yeah. Uh, I am a huge Big Mama Thornton fan. And she's all over the movie. And all over the movie. I, I, I love, and I've always, there's yeah, always been this dog. thing, there's always this thing, because she did Hound Dog, and this was a, a huge hit for her. And I've always, like, yeah, you know, give her a little respect, right? Yeah, and I love the fact that they put her in this movie it prominently. But they prominently. Didn't, they, didn't they have Big Mama Thornton is one of my oh, no, I agree. Huge, and, uh, huge, no, 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 how Elvis was thinking, yeah. you know, and, and, right. and, they, and to me, there's always been this thing that, you know, Elvis was some kind of racist. Why are, are you appropriated? appropriated. No, I don't think so at all. Okay. Yeah. What I think is, you know, he was, and it showed it in the film, is he was very influenced by the Baptist and Pentecostal, yeah, right. you know, gospel right. music. He right. loved that stuff, right. which was in the black side of the town he grew up in, in right. Mississippi. In the ghetto. Right. Okay. Tupelo. Right. Right. Tupelo. And uh, he was influenced by that. But he, he was friends with these people. You see him hanging out on Beale Street with B.B. King, and friends with him. B.B. Yeah. King is giving him advice yeah. and everything, you know. And it's like that, that. It, to me, it was important to show that. And I, 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 I agree it was great. with you one hundred percent. And I love the fact that they that they recognized yes. that that he like he really wanted to, uh, you know, show show you know like this was the thing that he was into, and he and he, and he remember like, the scene when he's in he's in bed with Lisa Marie, right. okay. And he's not happy about how his career is going. Right. Yeah. And he, you know, they're watching uh, uh, Big Mama Thornton. I think it's, it might be at Martin Luther King's funeral. Right. And she's singing. Or mm -hmm. maybe Robert Kennedy's, I forget which one. Yeah. They show both of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and he says, see this? This kind of music? This is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. But he couldn't. These, and, are, and, these, and are, the these are the people that are my influence. Right. And the reason he couldn't is because of Colonel Tom Paul. Correct. All right, which was Remember, played Colonel, very well by Tom Hanks. Colonel, yeah. Tom, Colonel Tom yeah. Parker wants him to do Santa Claus is coming in town. Yeah, what, 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 and, and he's just like, no, no, get this. Well, the, the, the 68 comeback special. Do you remember right? when he yeah. first saw um, that first scene when they show Elvis first come on stage? Something happened. Elvis oh, the girls go nuts. And the oh my girl, god, my favorite scene is the mother. <laughs> What's happening? Yeah. Why are you doing this to like, my son? And the girls are like, ah! yeah. my favorite part. Yeah. My favorite part right there is when his father Vernon says to the mother, "She's like, they're gonna tear him apart." He goes, "He goes, they don't want to tear him apart. They want to. They they'll say, they want to. Yeah, they want to tear him apart. They want to. I mean, and and but but what Colonel Parker was 
the scene, the, snow the, nar- the, narrative, the narrative at that point was Colonel Parker was saying he wanted to have have the girls have a feeling inside that they didn't know what to do with. Yeah. Right. You know, or they didn't think they but should have. It, it, and it, that's they what happened. It, yeah. That's what, what happened, happened, man. It, it, it's, 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 it's a moment that shows, like, the, the social uh, of, of what was going on right then. And they're like, these women are fucking loving this. And they're dead. And, and, yeah. and, and, and it was and bad. How they, how they wanted to, they wanted to like, send, they wanted to, like, send him to jail and stuff. Yeah. I mean, or so, the fact that he, he is exciting women. And, 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 what they, and they showed and, 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 and I was glad that they showed like Hank Snow. Yeah. yeah. Who was yeah. who was like, you know, representative of like this kind of like old style country music. Yeah. And, and I like Hank Snow, but but like he definitely didn't like what Elvis yeah. was doing. And you know, it, it kind of represented the old way. Yeah. And then, you know, you have Elvis wearing he was wearing makeup. Yeah. He's wearing makeup. He's okay, got he's mascara. wearing eyeliner. He's got the mascara. Yeah. The mascara. Yeah, yeah, mascara and eyeliner. Some guy in the crowd goes, oh, get a haircut, faggot. You know, he's like, <laughs> yeah. so, so, first of all, I love the fact that because uh, Colonel Tom Park is like one of the most, he's very villainized. Yeah. yeah. And they have, and they decided to cast like America's sweetheart to be. The person is the most well, it's called casting against type, <laughs> right? Okay, and it works sometimes. That was yeah. so yes. well. That was so well done. I like, I like the way that the whole thing, like the way they did it. But then the way Colonel Parker, how he manipulated his whole fucking career. Yeah, he wanted to go overseas. He couldn't do that. He could. He could get back in the country. He's, 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 he's an illegal alien. Colonel Colonel yeah. Parker, Colonel Tom Parker. Was illegally in the country he was all these Dutch years. Man, he, was from, he was from Holland. He had no papers. Yeah, no papers. Okay, and if he had left, he wouldn't have been I'm able to able. get back in. He knew that, and, and I, he and he made up all this bullshit about security problems and yeah. stuff. And and how about how about when you 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 see Elvis getting death threats and the guy running on stage yeah. and all that and the Vegas years. I think that was staged. That was I think it was staged by Colonel Tom Parker. I know. What do you I, think? I, I totally yeah. believe that. Yeah. I totally yeah. believe that to be true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? What's funny? Show business well, is snow well, business. Watching this, <laughs> it's the snow, snow, snow man. man. You know about snow watching man. this movie? But watching the movie in that series of Chippendale. I didn't realize how fucked up the whole chip and milk. Oh, oh, we can do a whole other podcast. Do you see that chip Do you know that history, Mike? I didn't realize how dark it was. I mean, that guy, Steve Barron, that started the whole thing. I have like, to watch that. Like, like, he was influenced by the... Dude, it was fucking... Let's talk that about it. Like, it's on... Yes. I no, it's on like, Hulu. There's a bunch of them. And it's true. It's, again, about... It's show business. It's about show business. Oh my God, women! You know, like just the fact that you know Elvis just excited all of them. Yeah, and, and, and you know they, they were practically having an orgasm watching it. Yeah, right. Okay. And they didn't know what to do. They were no, 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 they were losing. Well, look, look I'll, I'll say it right now, and you know I'm as straight as an arrow. It, it, Elvis, Elvis was like a hot dude. All right. You know, <laughs> like, he was a good-looking guy. I would have so, liked Elvis. So. <laughs> Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, yeah. Downers, they're like they yeah. just talk about like what's a downer? Yeah, what is a downer? Wait, downer. Like, wait, 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 we got upwards, we got down, we got this, we got that. But, uh, you know, it, it, it was actually very moving for me to watch when 
when Elvis and, and Priscilla broke up right. towards the end of the movie, and, and right. you see him like in the limo, and and you see how fucking you see how sad he is, he loved her. And, and, and the last thing he says is like, "I will always love you." Always you know? yeah. And I'm kind of like, "Oh, this is hard." But you know, <laughs> but you know what the funny thing is, she, she didn't mind that he cheated because she knew he was a fucking. It was the drugs. But then at the end, he wouldn't want to have sex with her. He got yeah. all weird stuff. Yeah. But the thing he was getting drunk was that she, big scene where he fucking collapsed. He used to have it going back. Yeah, well, it was he injections. Was, he's yeah, like, where's Dr. Like, Nick? Yeah. Where's Dr. Nick? No, he had like a Dr. Feelgood dude. Oh, that yeah. was, you know, so up. I could think it's like Michael Jackson, but Michael same Jackson thing. did it to himself. You know? well, well, he wasn't performing. No, but it was the same kind of thing. But I mean, it was bad. Um, yeah, and... and, and uh, if you ever, I don't know if you ever had a chance to, to read the book, but Priscilla wrote a book called Elvis and Me. Yeah. Back in the 80s, that was excellent. Uh, right. Okay, I remember reading that years ago. And they made a movie about it too, I think, a TV movie. Yeah. But, um, I mean, this movie, you don't even have to be an Elvis fan. It's just it's just it's like a, a story of a life that, you know, you, you one thing too is like when you watch those scenes from the 50s when yeah. all the girls were screaming, it really puts in perspective how number one controversial he was, yeah. and number two how much of an effect he had. And why is changing... he controversial? Because he's like exciting women. Yeah. <laughs> like, how about the outside of the show? It was, it was a racial thing too, because yeah. because, uh, because he was you know he was a, he was a you white remember, guy. You remember that? You remember the very beginning? Yeah. And he's like uh, uh, talking about talk, you know, Colonel Tom Parker. He's like, yeah. oh. He's white? Yeah, no, he thought he was what? black when he, he heard it on the radio. Yeah. He said, because hey, Hank Snow was like, oh, that's Negro rhythm. Right, right. Oh, yeah, but yeah, they thought, and, and the other guy is like, yeah, but they're playing this all over the radio. But they thought he was a dread. That's when they started doing those weird laws. They thought yeah. he was, yeah. was, was a dread. They thought he was a dread. Why do you think he got drafted? Because you're, no, talking, no, you're, right, talking, yeah, you're right. talking about a misogynist, a misogynist society. Society, yeah. And, and, it's it's like women are suddenly going yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no they, they they loved it um and how about the Ed Sullivan thing don't you, they, they wouldn't shoot him well that's right head. they right Ed Sullivan oh, Steve, show, the Steve Allen the Steve show, Allen show yeah. is when he had to come out and yeah. talk some tales yeah, yeah. 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 he didn't like that with the hound dog with the hound dog <laughs> and he <laughs> the dog what, you know? what? he's like this yeah. is so embarrassing yeah I'm not doing this I ain't doing this no more. Yeah. I, I will I will also say this because I am a circus person yeah. obviously uh. I love the connection. I never would have thought. I, you know, you know what? <laughs> I, I love the connection that they made to like Sideshow and Carney. Yeah, and, Carney. Yeah. and, you know, the and there, there's a great quote. There's a great quote. Oh, it's good. He's got his, uh, his quote. <laughs> it's he's quote from his phone here. There's a great quote. Uh, Tom Barker said, wait, not, it's in here somewhere. Hold on. Uh, like, I think he said, a man on an, an elephant, elephant looks, looks more important. important. <laughs> 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 I, I, used to, I used to ride elephant, I used to ride in elephant circus, right? in the circus, yeah. and I'm like, oh, deal, <laughs> deal, this is, a man on an elephant looks more important. It's that, true. That, it looks more terrifying. Yeah. That, 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 like, any kind of, that's like, there's an elephant, it's like, oh, how did it come on? Yeah. That's great. You know, and, and at the end of the film, uh, when they show the real Elvis singing yeah. Unchained Melody, oh, that was, I, that was I, moving. I love that they that did was, that. That was moving. I love that they yeah, did that. Yeah, they, they, re they really did it right. And, uh, you know, you know where he was supposed to play right before he died? Where? And some people still have the tickets. It's the Nassau Coliseum. Oh, is that true? Yeah. yeah. I did he not died in August 1677. I think the show was like the end of the month or something like that. Oh, Maybe man. September. It was supposed to be the next show. And uh, he didn't make it. And I remember that. I remember I remember Elvis dying. I remember my mother crying. I remember being like, oh, my God. How, how the fuck does Elvis die? You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, just, I'm just going to... I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna say this, but I kind of feel like the Elvis story yeah. is a lot like Pinocchio. He wanted to be a real boy. 
<laughs> well, okay. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I just, I don't know. I wrote it down like. That was like like he wanted to be a real person. Right. Not a and, doll. And, right. And he couldn't be. Because of Colonel Tom Parker. Colonel Tom yeah. Parker yeah. was just you know, making, yeah. like he wanted to actually, he could have done, he, he was supposed to be in some really cool movies. And yeah. Parker but, wouldn't let him but, do it. What might be like, we're just going to do some movies where you yeah. can sing. Yeah, and that's yeah, it. And that's it. And like, yeah. like, I, uh, he could, you know, I mean, most of the movies, especially the later ones, are like awful. Right. And, yeah. And, right. And, and he knew it, and he just did it for a paycheck. And, so yeah. I just, yeah. I'm just saying that I kind of, I kind of related to Pinocchio. He just. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. But I mean, he really, he could have. Could you imagine if Elvis had lived? He would have been. And, and where he would be right now? Now he'd be almost 90 years old, but. But you know, he'd what, probably what, be in a, he'd probably be in a Tim Burton film. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he would have been the best of Christ role in Edward right, Scissorhands. Right. <laughs> right. right. What's the problem with the at, at the end? The guy wanted to travel. He wanted to see other places. He, 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 he never, never went to Europe. Europe. He, he never, never went to Europe. He never went to Europe. And I well, did not know that. Crazy. I actually did not know that. What did the show that he did that he did called Circuit? Was that was Aloha big, from Hawaii. That, that was, was the closest the, he ever went to being overseas. That was, right. but that was, right. Right. Yeah. That was like a big show. Let me tell you and something. That combat I, special, like the highest rating show. And if he would have stayed with those guys, because they were trying to get rid of the The 68 comeback special. And then yeah. the fucking Colonel Parker, when the, the father said we quit it, he gave him the bill for all this shit he been right. doing. Right, right. He said, if you, leave, if you leave me, you got to pay this, 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 and this. Like you already took all my and money anyway, I love it. and now you want more. I love that he went in there under the pretense of making a Christmas special and didn't do one Christmas song. And didn't do one goddamn <laughs> Christmas song. But the show was and, such a success. And, and he did what he used to do is like like he just made those girls come. <laughs> <laughs> just just he, as he a side note. Those girls Real. Yeah. Like, like he used to do. Like, yeah, no, 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 no. He, he was, was like, oh, this is what he I was do. only like. He was only like 35 years old. He wasn't an yeah. old dude when that no, came out. He wasn't out. an old dude. Okay. Now, as a side note, okay, the scenes in that, if you don't see it too much in the movie, but if you've ever watched the whole 68 comeback special, he's in a, a boxing ring. Okay. And if you remember Billy Idol, Okay, did that yeah. video called To Be a Lover in a boxing yeah. ring, and he's wearing a lot. And he I said, he, he even said that was a tribute to the 68 I did not Elvis tell thing. That, but wow. he's, I see. Billy Idol is a tremendous Elvis man. Yeah, yeah. What, he, he was very Elvis. Was that a boxing ring? Yeah. Was that a boxing ring without the ropes? Then? The, yeah, on the ropes. Like, like a boxing ring. Did it have the ropes? Yeah, in the, if you watch the comeback special the way they really did it it's yeah. not shown so much in the movie yeah. but it was done in the boxing ring but the other thing was spinning around so he could see everybody yeah but it was, there was ropes yeah. all around like a uh, ring you know and he, and he decided like uh, uh, and he got his friends together like let's sit down and let's go back to our roots my, my roots right of just my love of what I love balloons. to do yeah and, and they're like and they're and, and all the guys Here's like, a thought. Here's a thought. Imagine if he lived and Rick Rubin did like a blues album in the 90s. Imagine that shit, man. Can you imagine? That would have been incredible. That would have been incredible. Like he, he loved his... Drugs don't pay. <laughs> but he died on the toilet. Don't do bar... He died on the, he, he died so, on the toilet. So the lesson today is don't do bar mutual. Don't do they the, constipate. Don't do okay. the drugs. Like, I don't even know what those And you'll end up on the toilet like Elvis. Man, don't do man, the drugs man. in the bathroom, man. <laughs> the I mean, it's every time I'm on the toilet, it's like, so, uh, I'm it's, always it's, 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 I'm always Well, you fuck up. This guy in. It's an outrage. It's an outrage. It's an outrage. All right, so what do you think? We're done? I think we're done. Yeah. I think those two movies we reviewed were fantastic. I think we did them. Uh, I, I love talking with you guys at, at the end of every year. About yeah, yeah, it's like a tradition. It's like a tradition. But be honest, the, the, the two movies go so good because they're all about fucking heavy drugs. <laughs> yeah, of course. Everybody <laughs> Yeah, can we do some more movies about heavy drugs? Yeah. It's, all, it's all about being real. Right. Right. Well, no, yeah. it's, it's all, up or it's down all about being loved up. It is all about being loved up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So let's let's promote this dude here. Yeah? Where can we find you? Talk about your social media. Where, yeah, where are you at? Uh, I, I just started a, a company called uh, Cloud Enterprises. Cloud Enterprises. Uh, I haven't got, I haven't got my, See? I don't, I don't have my. Uh, are you the CEO? Uh, I am the, the CEO of Cloud Enterprises. CKE. CKE. Yeah, CKE. Uh, I just started a company uh, I will get my website set up. Now call me to places.com. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, 2023 is going to be a great cloudy year. Wow. Uh, I'm going to have some shows. You're going, you're going to Norway. Oh, I was about to talk about it. No, we can't talk about it because it's something. Okay, well, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I, I'm so grateful that yeah, you're the best, I, I love having you guys uh, invite me to this. Uh, I always love, I love talking about movies. movies. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I just love cinephiles. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Not pedophiles, cinephiles. And cinephiles. Yeah. <laughs> you know what a cinephile is? A movie person. A, a, person, a movie. person who watches the credits. <laughs> yeah. That's true. But, I do. But you well, want to I do. Don't you sit and watch yeah. all the credits? Yeah. I want to know, like, know who you know, the grip was. Who was the grip? <laughs> who, who wrote this fucking music? Yep. Yeah. 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 I would like to make a confession. Oh, no. Oh, that was no. the first time I saw Beyond the Body of the Doll. And when I saw it, I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what are these guys doing? What is going <laughs> on? Like, that. That's yeah. it, what's the problem? You're probably like, like, what the fuck did Mike and Scott want to watch? What the hell's the matter with Mike? You know what? I can watch these motherfucking smoking. And then what's written by this fucking guy? No. I, I think, let's see, <laughs> Rocker Mike and the Clown this, have decided to, to make me watch this, this fucking movie. movie. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, just wait till the ending. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to kill these because guys. Because you're going to be like, what is going yeah. on? Here? <laughs> I, I don't know what this movie is about. But it's great, right? Okay. What do you think the movie's about? I would just at, 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 at the very least, it's it, it, you know, small girl, a girl band from a small town goes to LA, fucks up their life. That's <laughs> what do you think the movie's about? It was a shit show. I, I just, <laughs> it's a shit show. They fucking killed Lance Rock. That guy chopped his head off. And this guy got his head off. But, but I think he was trying to fuck him. He was trying to bang him. Remember he got super woman. He's super woman. Remember he got your he's getting your Z man. Yeah. Also your super woman. But he's but getting he's getting behind him. Remember he's getting, he's getting, him remember and getting super, more drugs. And him being <laughs> him being superwoman was one of his special parties oh, that so only certain bad. people got to go to. It was a special party. Oh I'm with you right now. Uh, to your listeners, uh, uh, if you have not seen this movie, oh my God, <laughs> Valley 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 Valley. and the Elvis, and the Elvis just wait till the ending, <laughs> and then you're gonna be like, what? What is actually happening right now? What in the actual fuck is going on? Because it goes, it goes, it goes everywhere, and you're like, what? And I love the fact that we got. Rob Rossi to, to watch, watch the movie. Like, that was a big feat Rob right there. Rob Rossi's yeah, like, yeah. clown, Rocker Mike, what have you got me into? <laughs> the, first, <laughs> the, the, first story, the first story, the first story, I'm like, these motherfuckers are Whoa, sick. Why? <laughs> but you know what? We're all dead. The movie, the movie actually ran pretty well. Like, there was no downtime in the movie. Really? It's a clear movie, movie man. And there was no downtime. Like, an I hour think, and a half of like nonstop. I told it's like an hour and a half of like, wait, what? I told, wait, what? I told some girl that I, I told her, this is like watching a car crash. I'm just waiting for what the hell's gonna happen. Like, you can't take your eyes. It's like a beautiful car crash. And by then, you're like, you what the stop. fuck you, happened? What you that? can't stop. You just go, why? I feel a tingle in my toes. It's oh, no. like, what the fuck did a I do? A chill <laughs> ran down my leg. I, I'm just glad. I have an epilogue. Yeah. Again, wiggles and fells. <laughs> and with that, we're going to say thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you all. The, me, thank you all the fans out there for the wonderful year you gave us. We appreciate yep. everything. All right. And remember, don't get drunk.
Get it done. We'll see you in 2023, folks. Happy New Year. Bye-bye. <laughs>